Say the thing, Brad. Say the thing. You just hey, sorry. What did what did you want us to call you again, there, Deckhand? Uh, you can call me Ishmael, but don't listen. I know what you're thinking. Don't bring up, you know, the big fish. Uh, actually, whales are mammals. And the moment you say whales, bam! The door to the captain's quarters kicks open, and walking out very quickly is Cat Mayhab. Uh, hold on, let me get his token. Damn it, where'd I put his token? <laughs> it didn't show up. It's not. There it is. Oh, he doesn't look that crazy. I don't look fucking crazy enough for you, do I? And he gets right in your face, Doolittle. Huh? Do oh. you say whale? Hmm? Uh, no, I... I, well, I bet I said... you're, you little British self never even seen a whale and he pokes you in the chest real hard. Hey, now, excuse me, sir. Uh, now, excuse I you. I've seen a whale devour ships larger than you can even believe. And you sit here and you say whale like like it's just some easy thing to say, huh? What whale? The ship was bigger than I could imagine or the whale was? The whale! The whale, the biggest whale you've ever seen! Moby Dick! And then Ishmael just kind of puts his hands in his head. He's like, oh, <laughs> fucking God, I can't believe he's on this fucking Moby Dick thing again. I swear as I seen it. The world's biggest fucking whale is huge. How do you know its name? Do you talk to animals as well? Maybe I named it myself because it was so big. And I, well, also I was drinking a beer called Moby at the time and it's a big fucking dick of a whale. He didn't. Wait. I mean, I have heard that whales have pretty large penises. Now you listen here. I'm not here to discuss whether or not the gender of the whale was feminine or masculine. Well, All I know is it. I want to now get here, get close here. And he grabs you behind your neck and kind of pulls you uh, in. And get close. <laughs> now okay. you listen here, you. I thought we were close enough. I'm gonna kill that fucking whale if it's the last thing I do. You hear me? <laughs> yes. That seems you, like. An odd thing do you know? Do you hold on? I'm fucking talking. Do you know why I'm gonna kill that fucking whale? Because you're a psychopath. No, it ate me cousin. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Poor old Geppetto, eaten by a whale. Can you fucking believe it? Well, maybe if we talk to the whale. Sure, he sure. Okay, he starts getting emotional. Sure, he was a, he was a bit of a puppet pervert, but he was still a good man. A Tarzan's gonna, um, Tarzan's gonna <laughs> tap the captain on the back and say, "It okay, Tarzan cousin Mary Jane." <laughs> I don't know who Mary Jane is, but my, now listen. No, sure, he, he had a little puppet. That he said was his son. And yeah, he dressed him in little clothes and said he went on wee adventures. But he didn't deserve to be eaten by that big fucking whale. That fucking dumb bastard. <laughs> the puppet can float. He didn't need to jump in the water. He's made of wood. And he grabs you, do little wood, I say. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Hark! Hear it now! <laughs> it was made of wood, and the man's life was taken, so I shall take upon ye the whale as life! Well, can you drop us off in Britain first? I... I have to. More and more because... I have to pick up some supplies. And he turns and you see Ishmael is looking and like where they have large harpoons, there are no like they're harpoon cannons. They have no harpoons. Oh, it looks like you're out of harpoons. Aye. 
that I be. But as you well know, hunting whales is illegal. Well, I didn't know that, but I'm glad to hear that, actually. I'm quite a fan of animals in general. And I am sorry to hear about your cousin, the the, the uh, puppet pervert. But... Oh, that's, that, no, that's good you like animals. And he grabs you behind your neck and pulls you close. Come here, lad. Oh, okay. <laughs> because this, this be no animal. This be a monster. A monsteros uh, proper. Well, I guess that is a little different. I mean, I think... I... Monsters are a different category than beast. You hear that? That's the ocean. Come to swallow you up. Just like that whale did. Uh, me, me dear, me dear cousin, I can't, I gotta do this. And he, he stomps back to the captain's quarters and slams the door. He's gone now. Listen, I man, just, I told you, I told you not to bring it up. I would hardly say I brought it up, but I could see what you're saying. He's real sensitive about that. He seems pretty sensitive. Yeah, yeah he might get I, you killed. I, Ishmael. Yes. Are are we safe out on that water with that captain? Oh, we'll be fine. I mean, we have to get to London first before we can pick up more harpoons, and we're gonna need some, probably some more people. Uh, I I would be more worried about yourself. We're worried about ourselves? What do you mean? I think we. I think he was worried about ourselves. Yeah. I, well, I'm worried for my own safety on that no, ocean that, no, with no, that no, captain. No, 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 no. I mean, with at London, you're a an American criminal. Also, you're very big. Oh. Yeah. Well, you know, I guess that's kind of why I want to go to London. To, uh, he 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 taps his belly. He goes, "It's pretty hard to hide around here." Wait, why are you well, a criminal, Paul? Well. I was framed. Oh. I Weren't you guys talking like about it? Doolittle, you were there, I believe. I think this I was out of game. You were I was, there. I was uh I was tending to my ducks. <laughs> you, I, I like to you see you did kill those ducks. All of this is happening while Red Fox is within earshot of them just openly talking about being wanted American criminals. <laughs> but we did say we were framed, or he did say he was framed. Yes, but he did I, say he was framed. I've seen Grendel with them, right? You actually haven't seen Grendel. You okay. know that he got on this ship with them. So um, I, based I, on, I know... Yeah, sorry, yeah. go ahead. I was going to say, based on a, a vague account at the docks, they saw a large furry thing get on the boat. Um, but he has been unusually stealthy. And Paul Bunyan is a criminal because he was framed by that uh, that inventor. He went around and told uh, everybody that him and Appleseed were the ones who were cutting down all the trees illegally. Of course. Because who else? I mean, who's a, who else would be a giant man thing cutting down trees? I mean, it is in my nature to cut trees down. <laughs> yeah, but you were doing it illegally. You cut the ones with the ribbon. Uh, right, right. It was now, a perfect crime. Right, yeah. right now. Uh, Red Fox is just chilling with his dog. We're on our way to Britain, right? Yep. I've got a ship full of American criminals. Yep. As soon as we get off, we can be extradited right back to Canada. <laughs> easy, easy. <laughs> right back to, or possibly even <laughs> Scotland Yard. One of the two. <laughs> uh, make a. Uh... Uh, make a... Would it be like a deception? Because I'm just kind of trying to chill in the background? No, I think you're good. I think they think you're just an, another deckhand. Yeah. Um, make a intelligence check, though. Okay. All right. With that intelligence check to 16, you know that, yeah, you, you probably could get away with doing that. The problem is, is you will probably be extradited as well. And you still have a, an item that you are looking for. Um, so even if you're not, you'll be so tied up in paperwork that 
your trail might get even colder than it already is. True. I'm still gonna listen for a bit. See what I'll, see what other information they reveal to each other. <laughs> Seems what like a wild that? crew. What is Appleseed doing? Johnny Appleseed's in his bunk commuting with the gray apple tree of the universe. Johnny mm -hmm. gets some insight into the per current predicament they find themselves in. What are you trying to figure out? How much longer is Johnny Appleseed going to be on this damn boat because Johnny Appleseed has seasickness? Roll 2d6. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, I closed that. Oh, how do you do? Oh, there we go. Nine. Nine. Uh, you you start thinking, how long will it take? You know that the land is close. Um, you've been at sea for a couple of weeks now, and uh, this is the final little leg of it. Uh, however, you do feel very queasy and throw up in the bucket that you've kind of kept with you. Johnny Apsi finds these conditions very implorable. Funnily enough, uh, your vomit is mostly like dirt. Oh, that <laughs> dirt was good dirt. It was growing dirt. Good grow, good growing dirt. Yeah, Johnny Epsi's just trying to weather the storm in his bunk. All right. As you're doing that, um. I had a question for Johnny Appleseed. When you eat an right. apple, do you eat the whole thing, core and all? Of course. The apple seed has to go in. You have to accept the sin of eating the whole apple, and the seed will nurture on the inside. And when you excrete it, it will have the energy to grow into a mightier tree. So yes, I eat core and all. Nice. Uh, Christoph, just a heads up. Yes, sir. You guys are on the Pequod uh, as captain by Captain Ahab. Excellent. Um, Grendel is somewhere on the ship. He has not been made visible to the crew, as I imagine he has been sneaking around. Um, yeah, I, Grendel... he, he's in the darkest underbelly of the ship, I imagine. You are in the lowest, darkest corner uh, of the... There is a kind of like closet, like a storeroom that has a... Um, that has like a hammock in it. You are not in the hammock. In fact, Dorian Gray is in it, and he is sort of rolling restlessly back and forth. Okay. Um, you are underneath the hammock, squished to the smallest of degrees. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Is there like a little chest in there? Yeah. Yeah, he's in he's in the small chest underneath the hammock. You hear people sort of trotting back and forth uh down below, but there really isn't that many people. Yeah. Grendel's stomach growls. He knows he knows better than to eat too many sailors. Because otherwise, who sails the ship? There is a plentiful supply of fish down there. Oh, well, yeah, I imagine a good bit of the fish will start to go missing about halfway through the voyage. All right. Roll a uh, stealth check. Okay. This music is hilarious I, I tried to get all the copyright free music so this is a pirate oh my goodness even right. when I have even when I have the goods I don't have the rolls Grendel as you slip through sneaking past these sailors are dopes you can easily sneak past them they don't notice you a single bit one of your outings involves you going out and you know grabbing a handful of fish and slipping back to where Dorian is sleeping but as you do, 
you could have swore you saw something on the stairs, but it is not there anymore. Uh, it is at this point red. Your dog, Shaggy, has come running up to you and is just whoop, whoop. Okay, show me, boy. Whoop, and it's going to turn around and begin running down the stairs. Oh, God. Uh, Doolittle, you, <laughs> Doolittle is going to hear the dog, uh, oh, he's muted, he might not be here. Oh, no, I am here, sorry, I forgot I was uh, muted. Uh, is, uh, can I hear what the dog is saying? Yeah, the dog going, I found him, I found him, found Winnie, down, down, and it's gonna start running downstairs. I will follow also. I will bring Jip. Oh god, Jip is I my gotta dog. get my list out. Which Jip, Jip is my dog. <laughs> I gotta get the list out. I have many animals. He has so many fucking animals with their own special names and personalities. <laughs> love it. I love that Dr. Watson is Droga too. Yeah. <laughs> so you go running down the dog uh leading ahead uh Doolittle. Ugh. Your dog is going to turn to you as your Jip is going to turn to you as you're running down the stairs, and he goes, "The I think he found a furry man." Oh yes, wait, that could potentially be bad. We were trying to keep him hidden because he's kind of a, a a freak. Yeah, yeah. Um, as the dog runs down, it gets to the lower deck. Um, at which point it runs to that back storeroom and starts sniffing around the door. The door? Okay. Uh, yes, to that storeroom. I'm going to approach the door and try to listen. Uh, would it, listening what would that in. be? Uh, like perception. to hear if he's like, yeah, munching on anything or doing anything weird in there or just waiting for me to come through? You can do a perception real quick. Grendel is certainly munching on fish. With a 14, as you're like listening in, you can't get quite a good listen um, because you hear what sounds like uh, people coming behind you, like Doolittle and another dog. Um, but you're able to make out what sounds like a man sleeping who's kind of like mumbling to himself and rolling back and forth. Um, and you hear the like the sound of something slopping, but you're not sure if it's water like hitting the ship or if there's something like flying around or if something is eating on the other side. As I come around the corner, I would like to sort of do like a yawn and sort of like, oh, I was just hanging out down here nonchalantly. Hey. <laughs> Hello. How are you? My name is Dr. Doolittle. Oh, a doctor. Yes. It's good to meet you. Yeah, it's good to meet you too. I see you have a dog as well, a animal, a friend, a friend of the animals. I am actually. This is Yip. So what are you I'm doing on this Jip. ship? Uh, I'm going to jolly old England. What takes you to England? I'm actually from England. I, uh, I live, hold on, I live in a, a really silly place that I forget the name of. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised you don't sound English states. at all. Well, you know, I live in, uh, I live in Puddleby on the Marsh in the West Country. Oh, nice. You've so been in are the you, Americas you for a week, two, you've lost uh, your accent. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I, was, uh, I was on vacation and I lost my accent. <laughs> so are you traveling with those two Yanks up there? Yanks. Oh, Brit the Brit uh the uh, Americans. Yeah, you're traveling with them? I met them on the way. I don't know them on the way. way. Uh Boston. You met them in Boston. I met them in Boston. You wouldn't know anything about businesses out at uh in sawmills out west, would you? No, I'm more of a doctor than a lumberjack. Okay. 
as this conversation is going on, in another room down here in the lower deck is a Dr. Watson, Dr. John Watson, uh, scribbling down his notes as he often does. A lot of animals, uh, where you hear, a lot of doctors. You hear a commotion outside. It sounds like Dr. Doolittle is getting grilled just a little bit uh, by uh, what you thought was one of the uh, the hands. Actually, make a um, an insight check. This is the beat that Grendel is singing that song to. <laughs> <laughs> Rock and pull and nice you and cool. You want an and so we... check? <laughs> you have 15. A 15. Your uh, keen level of observation, having worked with uh, Sherlock Holmes, afforded you that uh, this man, uh, one of the, what you thought was one of the deckhands, is in fact not. Uh, some of his attire is more uh, Canadian in nature. It uh, doesn't quite match the rest of the uh, dressed men uh, here. And and he's and he's asking like he's he's like he's obviously like grilling for more information. Yes, ha having been around uh, police uh, in Scotland Yard and Sherlock quite a lot, you know that that's basically what he's doing. Is Dr. Watson's gonna fluff up his collar and uh, he's gonna dig around to make certain that he has I forget, does Dr. Watson actually have like a badge on him? Or is he just like a cis Scotland Yard? Uh, he does have a, a, a license um, but it's not a like a, a actual license license it's like a medical license so okay. it does identify him um, but it does not identify him as some sort of uh, criminal authority. No. As, uh, I'm just gonna, like, like pop my collar a little bit and um, just, like, ruffle my way on down here. Just, man. Oh! Hello, gentlemen! What sort of, what, what seems to, what, what sort of things has the day brought us today? Do a little? And this gentleman I haven't met? Oh, you look as if you might have been in the Navy. Were you in the Navy? Good, sir. Red Fox, you this, see an I ape. out of game for a second. Yeah, I was going to ask, is this uh, Monkey Dr. Watson? Yes. Uh, yes. This is the equivalent of Beast from the X-Men, I realized <laughs> at some point. <laughs> <laughs> and she does speak English, or he does speak English, right? Yes, fluent English. Uh, fluent Monkey English. is a little reductive. Officer English. Think? Officer <laughs> English. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, this keeps getting weirder. What was the question from Dr. Watson? I said, good, sir. Have you you look as if you were a Navy man. Were, were you a Navy man, my good my good sir? I was I was in fact in the Queen's Navy myself. You were in the Queen's Navy. I was. I'm a cap I was a captain. That's how I hurt my leg here. As he slaps his leg where where, like, he's leaning on his cane and, like, just takes his hand and, like, slaps his leg. I'm sorry, what, what, what's your name? Dr. John Watson. Captain John Watson? Captain Dr. John yes. Watson. Yes, uh, it was a war surgeon, unfortunately. Uh, got shot in the leg. Um, it wasn't the shoulder. No, it was the leg. It was the leg. My my apology. Some. I was thinking of another thing. Um, but yes, I, I did. Now, mind you, were we gentlemen exchanging war stories? Do little, do little. I didn't know that you served. Uh, no, no. I did well. I, I did a little work in the. Uh, I did a little work in the Congo for the. Uh, <laughs> for the Empire. <laughs> <laughs> um. So Jeff has missed what Duval was saying and just looks at Watson for a minute and goes, do you do work with Scotland Yard? I, in fact, I do. My associate, unfortunately, has gone missing. 
and uh, I, I came to America looking for a contact who might know a bit more. But, but you're talking about back. Sherlock Holmes, right? I am. You've oh yeah, we get we, we get stories about you guys. We get stories nope. about you guys. I will say that it does they, not uh, they they kind of miss an important detail though. And what might that be? Well, you're certainly hairier than I expected, sir. Oh, that that was a that was a happenstance from one of our previous ones. It's actually why I've been looking for Doctor uh, uh, Mr. Sherlock Holmes because unfortunately, I um. I have a uh, Jeff would know the story is written by John Watson. Oh, okay. Yes, um, Watson actually is the one who writes the Sherlock Holmes like yeah. stories in canon. Oh, you've read my tales. How I was yeah, I decided to leave out the information on where I took the um I I had been administered serum that uh, that transformed me into where I am. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to find a cure for it yet. That might say it's an improvement. This just keeps getting weirder. I will say, though, it is quite the party trick when I pull out the old pistol. <laughs> I bet. Uh, this, um, so maybe you could enlighten me. Sorry, I'm, I, I'm Sergeant Jeffrey Fox with the uh, Northwest Mounted Patrol. What happened to that sawmill back there? Oh, my word. It, it was... It was... God, it was hideous. It was awful. It was it was some some American man was inside of a metal tin contraption and was cutting down things and threatening people. As you sort of, I imagine you're going to tell him what happened. At least yeah, the Cliff as Notes I, as, version. As I re, as I, re, uh, I open my notes and I kind of like regale a little bit of information. Of like just just to give like a general rundown, like the equivalent of like a like a quick report. As you are are telling him this, uh, we move into the room. We uh, sort of see peeking out of the chest is Grendel, as he's munching on some fish. Uh, but we go to the hammock swinging above him, where Dorian Gray is deep in a sleep, having a nightmare, <laughs> a nightmare of long ago. Ooh. We we fade. Oh. Dorian Gray, you wake up face first in your second floor manor. Uh, you are in a pool of fucking blood. Oh, God. Uh, flipping around, you see behind you a large painting of yourself that you recently had commissioned. Um, you don't appear to be harmed in any way. Uh, you're just kind of in a, a big old pool of blood weird is this is this blood coming out of me like i'm gonna check uh you you sort of pat yourself down and no it doesn't seem like you're you're bleeding at all um however the blood seems to go out towards the uh doors in front of you and down to the right of the stairwell uh sort of in the main foyer of your your manor well i'm gonna i'm gonna follow it follow the trail you get up and you begin slowly following the trail step by step. Your manor is eerily quiet, normally filled with large uh, sort of jovial parties and uh, jubilation, now dead silent. Um, you go down your uh, right set of stairs and you see laying in the floor up against one of the pillar in another pool of blood is your butler, Victor. Uh, he looks uh, injured. Um, but more surprisingly, he is floating in the air, um, grasping at his neck uh, as if he is being uh, strangled by something. Uh, he kind of gives you a quick glance, but he, he's kind of too busy fighting off this invisible assailant. Uh, what do you do? Do I realize he's being strangled with a six? <laughs> uh, with a six? <laughs> I mean... It's pretty obvious something fucked up's happening. You're not sure. Maybe he caught his neck on this like banister. Oh, here uh, I'll, or on this pillar. I'll, I'll help you down. But Mr. Dorian, Mr. Dorian. No, I got you. I got you. Hang on, hang on. We gonna get a stool. Um, 
as you go over to uh to help him, an invisible hand shoves you, slamming you against the uh the stairwell. It looks like whoever did this uh is holding up the butler with one hand and basically shoved you with the other one. Um and he's gonna Mr. Dorian! Ah! And he you know, with with the little bit of strength he has left, he pulls out what looks like a strange dagger and stabs uh, the air. And you see it make purchase, uh, the tip of the blade disappearing as someone goes, damn, damn it! Argh! And you see him stumble away, or you see bloody footprints stumble away before the door to uh, your side room, boom, busts open. And uh, whatever it was sort of scurries in there. Uh, your butler falling to the ground. Uh, uh, Master Dorian. What the fuck was that? He's here. One of. <coughs> he can hardly talk because he's he's been choked. One of Dracula's minions. He, he's come Dracula? to kill you. Yes. Oh, the the painting. Of course, the the painting. You, Master Dorian, you, you've attempted to, to defy life and death. Dracula has, has taken offense to this. No. Uh, he wants, he wants to kill you, Master. Wants to steal your secret. Well, we, we, be, we better get out of here. No, Master Dorian, don't, don't try to avenge me. I'm far too old and weak to, to, to aid you much longer. Wait, how do, you, <laughs> well, how do you know about vampires? Why do you have that dagger? Ah, uh, I suppose, <coughs> I suppose now is the time to, to tell you. And he, uh, crap, where did I put it? Right here. Okay, I think it's here. Yes, okay. He, um, he goes, I, uh, sir, my last name, it should have been obvious. Dorian, you only know him as Victor. He's your butler. You don't really, <laughs> like, by the way, in the original story, you only know him as Victor. So that's 100% canon to the public <laughs> domain story. Uh, how could I have been... So disillusioned. He nods. He is yet. I, as their descendant, I, I know many of Dracula's secrets, but now he's gone too far. You'll never be able to defeat your this foe, this monster. You'll need to find a monster yourself. Here, and he he, he like reaches out. Uh, the paper, please. He reaches. Oh. Uh, I'll quickly, you, quickly grab it from him. Uh, when I, when I was traveling with my sect of monster hunters, we heard tell that a beast from ages past, Grendel, still lived. You must find him. He is the only beast stealthy enough and violent enough. To defeat this evil foe. This invisible... Oh shit, he's back! And all of a sudden you see him get lifted in the air and thrown across the room. R run, Master Dorian, run! I'm gonna I'll grab my painting and fucking get out of there. <laughs> and as that happens, you wake up from your dream. Ooh, hold on. There's a car honking outside of my house. I need to make sure it's not one of ours. Is it mine? Okay, I'm back. Dorian, was it, you were sort of... Was it mine or yours? No. Okay. It was in the neighbors. Okay. Um, Dorian, you are awoken. No. Um, the sound oh. of arguing happening outside. I... Oh, that was a weird dream. Did this actually happen, or was this just a dream? 
um, you feel like you've, you've remembered it. You didn't okay. quite remember it last time. Oh, gotta find, gotta find Grendel. Grendel, you hear your name. <laughs> uh, Grendel is enjoying his, his fish kind of sloppily in the midst of his crate. Or not his crate, his, uh, the, the small, like, one foot by three foot chest. It's directly under Dorian Gray. So it I is. imagine he can possibly hear the, the messy sounds of something eating fish with its hands. <laughs> Dorian, make a perception check. Nope. <laughs> As Dorian's like, I gotta find Grendel. You jump out of the hammock and you put your foot on the chest, which closes it. <laughs> oh, oh, he's gonna look around real quick, and I and I run out of the room. Grendel, Grendel, <laughs> running out of the room <laughs> to do little in them, yelling, Grendel, Grendel. <laughs> Oh, hello, friend. In a panic, by the way. <laughs> have you seen Have you seen Grendel? Grendel? No, that name doesn't sound familiar. I say as I sort of am like, <laughs> like, like doing like the head bob notion towards Fox, <laughs> Red Fox. Like that sounds not like someone we would be hanging out with. Probably not. Oh, I had the I weirdest know. dream. I can't remember, but no, no, honestly. Wait, was Grendel that odd creature that spoke briefly and then disappeared into the woods after the Tin Man was shooting up things? I don't remember any of that happening, to be honest with you. I distinctly, I remember <laughs> writing that down here. You will not tell me I did, I misssaw that. Yeah, I, I kind of remember <laughs> I know that. I, did not, I, did, I, I know I did not breathe in any vapors in that wood. Red Red Fox, you know you have to make a check. You know. No, I'm, I'm just fucking... I'm listening to to Doctor Watson here, and I, was, I, I I I look over his shoulder at the notes too, and I'm like, oh, could you tell me more about Grendel? He, he said he was scampering off into the woods. Weird creature. It's the oddest thing. You think I'm Harry? No, this one. This one was, gosh, had to be two heads taller than me. Full of the ugliest damn thing I've ever seen. It's like if a it's like if a cat and a bear got together and walked on two legs. Grendel, you can hear this. A cat and a bear got together and walked on two legs. That's not okay. how that's not how things reproduce. I, I was a little I was confused because none of you seemed like cannibals. No, no. Heavens, no. So where's this Grendel now? Did you get on the boat with you? I'm absolutely not aware. I think I, I think I led the brigade on, uh, was not watching my tail. Led the brigade onto the boat. The shenanigans of Dr. Doolittle, unfortunately, he brought the zoo with him. It almost appears that we are no longer on a boat, but an ark. <laughs> uh, an arc and to, is a boat, uh, actually. To, to Mr. Dorian Gray, he says, "Were you alone in that room?" Uh, yeah, it was just me and chest of my belongings, and well, there were. Yeah, my is spot. my dog doing anything right now? Uh, both of the dogs are are like peeking into the room, uh, sniffing. So Grendel, you do hear them sniffing. Hey, wait, what's what are that? you doing what's on this that? boat uh, again? And who's... how did we get on the boat? I feel like I must have drank a little too much. I'll have just look been? down at my dog and say, go on, boy. We're going to Britain. Go. Did we not Brindle. charter a Wilson. private ship? Um, Blech. no. Oh. <laughs> As Johnny Appleseed's <laughs> come down to get another bucket. We did not. 
Well. Dorian just looks uh, disgusted. I've, uh, I have sent my dog into the room. Uh, both dogs actually have, have gone into the room. Um, and they're sniffing around. Um, eventually they do get to the chest. Rendell, you hear two dogs sniffing the chest. <laughs> and Doolittle, you hear, Ooh, is that? Ooh, ooh, big man. <laughs> Hurry, fish. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say in dog, like, Hey guys, don't worry about that chest. Huh? Okay. But then, uh, I'm sure I noticed Fox's this guy dog. talking like a dog, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and how does that sound? Do little is it? <laughs> 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 Unfortunately, Fox's dog seems pretty focused. No, Master Windows find be found. Oh! As he starts howling next to the chest. I'm kind of looking for a monster, so I'm gonna like I'm gonna draw my pistol and start walking into the room on my revolver. All right, Grendel, you were in, you have just finished your fish. I also instruct <laughs> the dog to back off a bit. All right, the, the, the dog takes a couple steps. So he can't back. just be grabbed out of the chest. <laughs> no need for uh, for for weapons, sir. We're we're all friends here on this boat. Mr. Gray, do you feel like opening that chest for me? No. No? Hmm. This... Wait, are you a cop? <laughs> I'm, asking, I'm asking out of character. Yes. <laughs> if if you're a cop, you have to tell us or else... He's a, he's a Canadian <laughs> cop, to be specific. <laughs> That's not really oh, a cop, then, at all. Yeah, he's not a real cop. He's from Canada. <laughs> you are, uh... In the employee of the captain. In the employee of the... Oh, you mean a, like Ahab? No. No, the, the, cap, the captain of the ship. No. Oh. No, I'm not a whaler. You're not... Oh, shh, don't talk about whales. I don't know how the captain wants a whale. You hear you upstairs... Who the fuck said about a whale? <laughs> Why do you want to go through my belongings, then? I think he's a pervert. And you're sure your belongings are the only thing in that chest? While this conversation well, you don't is going have on, the authority here. What is Grendel I know, doing this is, in the chest? I'm staying polite right now. If you could just please open it. Uh, Grendel. Yes, DM. What are you doing in the chest? Hearing this conversation outside the chest. Biting time. Nothing in the chest. It is a very small thing. Are you saying that out loud to us? <laughs> Nothing. So. So. I'm not in here. <laughs> <laughs> Which way did the story actually go? Did you say that out loud? Uh, yeah, we'll say that uh, Grendel <laughs> kind of whispered it. All right. Very, very, very quietly. Make a uh, make a. Roll 2d6 for me, Grund. 2d6? Yeah. So, Very so. average. As as you're you're sitting there thinking, biting my hey, uh, just um you do say it a little louder than you expect because a whiff of something, something almost nostalgic, uh is in this chest with you. You're not sure what, but it makes you fucking angry. Oh, he, he's not sure. Yes, you're not sure what it's what it's from. You you don't have it in your hands to sniff it exactly, but it's in here with you, and you don't like the smell. It makes the hairs on the back of your head stand up. <laughs> All right. Well, I suppose as the other characters are, are standing around the chest talking about it and deciding who's going to open it. It suddenly explodes. It just explodes <laughs> into oh. wood chips. And, and it's... Oh, there you are. And, 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 
and in its place after the cacophony and dust is a nine foot tall one armed Bigfoot. <laughs> he goes uh he goes How dare you disturb my meal I've been sitting here quietly with my delicious fish not bothering anyone and Is yet a succulent Chinese meal <laughs> a succulent Chinese meal <laughs> <laughs> busy bodies come and stand around bothering me and what is that stench uh, you can make a perception check <laughs> oh sniffing around you instantly know what it is digging and rummaging through Dorian Gray's uh, belongings, you find a note. Now, the note isn't super special. It has words on it, words you don't care to read. Um, but it has a I splatter of, of blood on it, blood from the invisible man that Dorian Gray stabbed, or Dorian Gray's butler, Victor, stabbed and splattered on the note. When you take a big whiff, you know exactly whose blood this is. Beowulf. Be Beowulf is the invisible man? He is. What the hell? <laughs> the warrior! The warrior! Oh, no. <laughs> Gr Dorian Gray. He, he shreds the paper. Uh, he just, well, he only has one arm, so he crumples it up, I suppose. Bites it. <laughs> Bites it and tears it in half. Dorian, that's that note that, uh, that Victor oh, yeah. gave you. Grant. Vincent. Vincent, my butler, gave that to me. I can't. I was, it was I Victor, can't seem to remember but... his last name. <laughs> it was <laughs> Vincent. <laughs> Von, von Hearsay. That was it. Von Hearsay. <laughs> Vincent Priceless. No, it's, it's Von <laughs> something. Maybe, maybe Von Hannibal? No. I oh. care not for your manservant. Well, he told me to find you. Why? Why find me? What has it to do with the warrior? Uh, th you have to hunt down the the monster that tried to kill us. <laughs> well, mostly me. Oh. Yes, the the assassin was t sent to kill you specifically. Yeah, I had to take out my painting. Uh, and he were told by Victor as he was dying that it was one of Dracula's minions. Yeah. Oh, believe me. I am on the hunt now. And Grendel will take whatever is left of that paper and just smash it into Dorian's chest. There ain't much of the paper left. <laughs> and it's very wet. <laughs> roll, roll, hold on, Dorian, roll 2d6. Hold oh, on, wait a second, why is it wet? <laughs> he used his hand and mouth to chew it. Oh. Or to rip it apart. <laughs> roll 2d6, uh, Dana. I... Yeah, I did, I did. Did it not show up? Oh, did it? Oh, it was 8, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he did. So, you see, uh, what is left of the note uh, basically says um, the, hold on, where is the, um, just lost it. I'm sorry, guys. I got so many fucking notes I have to flip through. It is. Uh, it has a sigil on it. Uh, 
this is of a fox sort of hopping around a quiver uh, with a rifle um, sort of basically put between the quiver. Wait, the fox has a rifle? No, the fox is, is jumping around the, the uh, quiver and there is a rifle um, in addition uh, to that. I know, this must be from the Royal Fox Hunting Club. <laughs> the only logical conclusion. The only logical conclusion. Um, but the note is written by somebody named Victor Parker. Oh. <laughs> uh, it says descendant of Jonathan Harker. Uh, it details um, a time in which these group of monster hunters heard tell of a creature called Bigfoot. Um, and while some of them went to go hunt it, uh, they were killed and eaten. Um, Victor was unable to uh, go. He didn't have the manpower nor the uh, vigor to do so. Uh, but he believed that the creature was indeed Grendel from the Beowulf uh, saga. Um, detail below, he has a list of directions, ones that Dorian remembers following, um, as well as below that, uh, descriptions of someone uh, which you now know as Beowulf becoming one of Dracula's minions in order to gain some semblance of immortal life. Uh, however, the rest of the note is ripped and slimy, so it is unreadable. Ah, Harker, uh, the, that was his the, last name. The last thing it says is here, de here below are important details for facing, and then it just stops. <laughs> <laughs> the warrior was meant to be slain. It was written. Yeah, that's what that's what Vincent said. Um, but it looks oh, like... you dunce! He was meant to already have been slain. Killed by a dragon long, long ago. The implication of the note implies that Beowulf may have sacrificed his, basically his visage, his, uh, like, the ability to see him, you know, his pridefulness of, of seeing him as the great warrior in order to survive that mortal fight with a dragon and now is one of Dracula's minion. Mm. Yes. Wait, how, do you, how do you know so much about this, this Beowulf? The warrior did this to me. And he takes his left arm and moves it over the stump and down the empty space where his right should be. He took my favorite arm. Oh, the things we have done with that arm. You wouldn't believe. You wouldn't believe. Oh. Well. Uh, Gre Grendel looks over at the man holding what he assumes is a weapon. Uh, can you describe yourself? Because I wasn't here for the initial description. Red Fox. So how would yep. you describe yourself? Say medium height and build. Uh, he is dressed like a red coat with blue pants and is currently wearing a wide brim hat. But... Having seen this thing, he actually decocks his pistol or his uh, revolver and puts it away. Mm. I don't know what the hell you are, but you are not a Wendigo. You are wiser than your 
sartorial choices suggest. Grendel, roll 2d6. A two. Uh, you uh, do recognize that name, Wendigo. One time when you were out hunting, which you could assume, you know, based on the note from Victor, may have been the incident he was talking about, uh, at which point a monster, a large goat-like creature with no legs floating upright, or I mean an elk-like creature uh, with white fur, with no legs floating in the air, with cold wind blowing around it, attacked you, um, killing some hunters who I... You, from what you can assume, mistaken uh, you for it. Uh, and you were wounded pretty badly, which is why you had to go hide in that cave. It was a very embarrassing thing for Grendel to get beaten by another cannibalistic creature. Ah, uh, I know the dread Wendigo. Very, very fearsome. It has my respect and my ire. Someday, when I am finished with this, I will return and feast upon it. And uh, Grendel will smile showing twin rows of razor-sharp teeth. Why do you seek this thing? I'm going to assume I don't know what Grendel is. You have no idea. Grendel is a Bigfoot. Yeah, that, that's actually what I was about to say. Are you some kind of, like, are you a talking Sasquatch? I do not know the meaning of this term. I am Grendel, the fearsome, and Grendel is me! But you've encountered a Wendigo before. Oh, yes. Oh, oh yes. It defeated me once, but I will have my revenge! Now, what brings you to this boat and our charming company? I assume you've met the others? Oh, yeah, I've met them. He, he, he's really, looks like he's just really thinking right now. <laughs> as, uh, as you are thinking, uh, we are going to cut real quick to up above. Up above, uh, Tarzan, in the crow's nest, you see uh, somebody sort of looking out with their monocular and they go, oh, land ho! Uh, as you see in the distance, London, England. <laughs> I, I didn't have it queued up. I'm sorry. Uh, do Tarzan see trees? <laughs> you do see trees. You also see fields, plains, and land. <laughs> the beautiful and glorious land of England. As we all know, filled with trees and beautiful rivers with no pollution whatsoever. <laughs> uh, Tarzan excited. Tarzan swing from <laughs> ropes and sails. Oh. 
Paul Bunyan, you see Tarzan going fucking ape shit. He, uh, Paul Bunyan kind of like shakes his head like some people, huh, babe? And then he goes, he hefts his axe and looks at the mast of the ship and looks at babe and goes, anyways, what do you think? One swing? Mm. <laughs> babe nods. Paul Bunyan, he goes, all right, here goes nothing. And he... Uh, <laughs> He like cocks back his axe. And, Ahab is like, standing in front of you. Like he's right about to do it. And then he looks over and sees Captain Ahab. Ahab just he, he crosses his arms, he just shakes his head no. I I kinda uh instead of acting like I was about to swing my axe at the mast of his ship, I just sort of put it over my shoulder. So it right, looks roll, like I wasn't about to <laughs> roll a deception. Okay. Okay. Uh, oof. You, you see Ishmael and he just looks at you disappointed. I, I, I wasn't going to do you, it. He shakes his head. He knew you were going to do it. I, I, babe. And he, tur he turns away. Babe is looking away as if not involved in it. <laughs> I, I swear I wasn't going to do it. I, <laughs> to I, mean, England. I, I mean, I thought about it, but. <laughs> yeah. Ahab is going to go up to you. Uh, and I guess Tarzan, who's coming down. And I guess Appleseed's probably back up on. Once he heard land. Uh, there we go. All right, listen, you two. Apple boy and big man. Yeah. What you want? Here's, here's the ticket. What's the ticket? You two are Americans. With no passport, I might say. So... We're gonna have to hide the big one in a crate. Okay. And what about me? Well, are you good at lying? I don't know. Let me check. Uh, moderately okay. <laughs> well, if you want, you can hide in the crate. Or we can dress you up as one of the deck hands. But if I find, but if they listen, come here. And he puts his hand behind your neck and pulls you close. Listen, if they find out that you're Americans, I'm gonna. I don't know. You're stowaways to me. You're dead to me, or, just like my dear cousin or, who died. Get me by a whale. If I go down. You go down, too, for buying harpoons there, old man. Now, listen, I haven't bought the harpoons yet. But you, so you have the got, intention. You, you ain't got shit on me, apple boy. Listen. Johnny obviously looks at Babe uh, and then looks at the mass and just nods his head. <laughs> now, listen, I'm trying to help you out. You do good by me, I'll do good by you, eh? Yeah. All right. Yep. I don't <laughs> think I'll be able to hide as one of your men if I keep throwing up black soil. <laughs> oh. Oh, God. Ugh. Well, That's maybe use, maybe oh, just what? use your sickness to your advantage. Wait. Do they allow religious exemptions in this country? Uh, no. Oh. It's Damn. a hard no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Wait a minute, you're American. Don't you know that that's like the whole reason you started your damn place? Dude, I don't know. I just woke up in, a, in the apple tree grove talking to the apple trees. Oh. Yeah. Uh, he he lets go of your neck and he turns to uh, Paul. 
Oi. Huh? Huh? So, we can drop you in a crate. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't have much of a plan after that. Wait, why don't we just jump in the river? Now, you could jump in the river if you want to swim. It is the cleanest river ever. <laughs> no dirt, no nothing in it. Ain't got to worry about disease or anything. What about well, uh, crocodile? Uh, no, no crocodiles in this one. Not even a rat, if you believe it. Mm, I don't. Is it just me, or does it look like the river is dirt? And the dirt's moving. No, that's the shade of the isles, my boy. Snakes? Of beautiful oh, England. Now, there is a fuck ton of snakes. <laughs> Po I, just, I just wanted to. <laughs> I'm a super venom, poisonous. Venom. Very oh. venomous. So, okay. So, what are we going to do about the ox? Well, maybe he yeah. can pull the crate. I, I'll do. That sounds like a plan. I'll get in the crate. Oh, you will have to. I mean, we'll have to get close. There won't be a lot of room in this crate. Now, one more thing. I can hide being the being a, a man of, of the region, and Ishmael will tell you. Once you're there, if anyone asks how big, how why you're so big, just say you're American. They'll just believe it. Yeah. Okay. I like that. <laughs> All right. That's what I was going to say. Anyways, actually. That's good. That's good. Now, if you think you can talk past Scotland Yard with that, then, you know, we could do that. But they're going to want your passport. Uh, Wait. What kind of a, what no kind of a fascist point. place is this? Wait, is there uh, other people going to America on this boat that have, I mean, going to England that are not part of a group that have passports? Pretty much, I believe everyone else on this ship I mean, we just. I will say, Red Fox actually there. does have a passport. Yeah. Let's we'll just kill that guy, and we'll we can give his passport to you. Do Canadians get to go to Britain because they have the Queen on their money? Basically, yes. Yeah. We're still part of Britain at this point. That's so in unfortunate. This Commonwealth. I, I meant in the 1800s when we were playing the game. Yeah. Yep. So unfortunate. Oh God! Here we're on the dock. Yes, <laughs> oh. As we've docked. <laughs> oh, well, Captain, I, there you go. please oh, show. Oh. Show. Quick, oh. quickly, the crate. Where's quickly. the crate? Yeah. <laughs> sort of Babe, puts you in act the natural. Room. And I hop in the uh, crate. Moo. Moo. Uh, okay. <laughs> After watching all these antics, I'm actually just going to say, no, no, you guys can be my guests. I pop my head up out of the crate. Really? Did you do that? Yeah. I definitely recognize Paul Bunyan. Like, oh, the I'm American. second best lumberjack in North America. The second best, John. The second you best. Paul? Who? Huh. Huh. Who's the first? Big Joe, of course. Never heard of him. Yeah. yeah. That guy can eat apple seeds all day. And Johnny Appleseed. Look, we're innocent. Why couldn't it have been John Henry? <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> hey, girl, here, have this apple seed. Uh, he hands to uh, what's his name, the captain. <laughs> it's good for your health. It puts ten years on and leans in. Might help you, you know, give you the strength to take down that whale. God, Captain Ahab with whatever the fuck this thing is. <laughs> <laughs> he gives him a wink, wink, wink. Thursday. John Henry Sailor used to be now. Paul Bunyan's drink but drinking buddy, but then he died bursting the machine. Now we all know it's Dynamite. Terminator. It's the Terminator. Yeah. It was actually a machine called the Chadron. Oh, God. Ooh. That's right. I'm, throwing, I'm just sprinkling Lord. it in. Sprinkling it in. 
Uh, as a, if you want to put yourselves down here, um, the ship docks and waiting at the dock are a bunch of um, Scotland Yard uh, people in addition to the uh, to sort of general harbor staff. Uh, and waiting there is uh, what looks like an investigator. Um, he waves down Cap Mayhab, who comes down here and uh, begins chatting with him. Uh, Dr. Watson, you immediately recognize him. Mm -hmm. And uh, as Captain Lestrade, or in Inspector Lestrade, I'm sorry. Look. Uh, as he is basically grilling Captain Ahab over whaling uh, issues. As as I'm gonna just walk on up and just be like, well, well, good day to you, Captain Lestrade. Oh, uh, Doctor Watson. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet you. Uh, I didn't expect you to arrive on uh, a whaling vessel. Ah, it's not a whaling vessel. I I can <laughs> say I can safely say that this good captain here did no such whaling the entire trip from America to here, from Boston to this harbor. Mm. Roll a persuasion. Okay. Let me find out what my persuasion is. It is... Okay. You will have advantage to this because the strange worked with you before. Okay. 17, he goes, hmm. He's going to turn to Ahab really quick. You're very lucky that you have such a good word to your name. Otherwise, we would have done a much deeper sweep of this vessel, considering you have harpoon cannons on the side. And he turns, Ahab points to him and goes, those aren't harpoon cannons, they're uh, aesthetic. Regular cannons. <laughs> they're for aesthetics. No. For ferrying. Now, my judgment does end good, sir, as, as soon as I do leave this, leave your fine boat. But I, I can assure you, Lestrade, if, if I have the confidence in this man to, for him not to, to dilly about those cannoning days, then perhaps they will just be aesthetic. Am I right, mm. Captain? Uh, yes. Yes, they are. Uh, very much so. All right, well, see to it. Um, need to have to check the other members for passports and things, as usual. Uh, uh, Dr. Watson, you need not, uh, do such a thing. I'm well acquainted. Uh, and he turns, I guess Appleseed's the one who's right there. Are you, sir? Yeah. Yeah, what do you want? Um... Uh, a passport. I'm um, a what? A passport. A passport. I just uh, got Red on the Fox, boat. I imagine is, is I just got up. on the boat. I don't know where the fuck I'm at. It was one of those things where I got on the boat, and then once I was on the boat, I couldn't get off the boat. And they told me, "Well, you're stuck on this boat until we get to Boston." So I am sorry about that. Um, you you were not allowed to leave. Well. No one, no one on the. Sh I mean, I just walked on when I was drunk, and then by the time they realized I was on, we were already like two hundred miles off the coast, and they weren't gonna turn around. Five. <laughs> okay. Well, he's rambling. Um, I'm actually gonna approach. Do you want an uh, Inspector Lestrade. Inspector Lestrade. He, he hand turns over, to A. He turns hand to over A. really quick and grabs him. And he goes, now, just because you're not a whaling vessel does not mean that slavery is suddenly on the table. And you're like, what are, what are you talking about? And then that's when you cut in. Uh, <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll hand over whatever credentials I have and say, what was I saying? Right. No, no, he's he's not a slaver either. This is, a, this is just some drunk American. I met them on the boats. I'm going to give them a quick tour at London. And then we'll be back on our way to North America again. Not that watch. Uh... You want an I apple? Didn't, didn't expect you to, uh, someone of your standing to arrive here. Uh, this 
there's some sort of official business or not yet a sightseeing tour yeah Yeah. more a sightseeing tour figure i'd see how you guys do it up at scotland yard Ah, makes sense for an american to use their authority for such uh jovial things but if you want to see how it's done right then uh i have no qualms with doing so and he stamps your uh, passport and hands it back to you thank you Uh, you do know that they will be under your uh, jurisdiction Uh, should any of them act up then you will be equally responsible oh i'll hand them right over to you Ah, sounds like a sounds like a plan then uh enjoy your stay in london the most beautiful city there is and he like waves his his hand open and it's dark and smoggy it's dr- there's a little bit of rain it's everything i've ever heard uh yes my, i'm sure far more impressive than the americas <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just kind he, of like <laughs> politely <yeah>. nod <laughs> yes um well you, you I, should it, uh you should take a trip over sometime see it for yourself uh, we, i would and as he's saying that this uh scotland yard uh policeman walks up and as uh, inspector yes there's been there's been another uh, and uh the specter was trained goes ah i see well uh unfortunately we are a bit busy at the moment so i'll have to forlay that vacation for another time uh dr watson uh yes. should you have uh, the free time uh perhaps your associate here may wish to invite uh we do have an investigation that is well it's rather queer we we would have gone to sherlock about it uh mr holmes but uh because of his missing we have been unable um irregardless if you have the time i'll be heading over to uh night street in uh i will be heading over to i'm gonna flip the map gonna take a little poke i'll be heading over to knightsbridge uh over by hyde park uh, there's been a mysterious murder uh one that i would uh, greatly appreciate your assistance in also tipley i'm not really quite doing anything until i find further information on sherlock and well he's been He's been gone for quite some time. Currently, my case has gone cold. Ah, it's unfortunate to hear. Well, uh, it's a pleasure meeting you all. Uh, sorry I couldn't discuss uh, further conversations about it, but uh, I must be going. And he gives a polite nod and begins uh, walking off with the policeman as he does, uh, Grendel. Yes, DM. Uh, hopping up onto the roof, which you are easily able to do with the amount of sort of distraction you see. Um, you are going to see uh, that inspector bump into someone. It's an old man. Uh It's an old man with a, a younger man with him uh, who has a young boy on his back. And he's going to go, I don't know why you needed to bring him here, Cratchit. We're here to pick up what we need to. Nothing more. Well, well sir, I, I had to bring Tiny Tim with me. I couldn't couldn't just leave him. Uh, his mother's far too busy. Eh, whatever. As long as we get what we came here for, Captain Ahab should have it, and then we can be on our way. Uh, yes, you'll be able to carry both, right? If not, throw the kid in the Thames. Uh, <laughs> I, now, sir, I don't care. Now, come on. <laughs> Excuse oh, us. Oh, yes, this is just my menagerie. <laughs> <laughs> the old man, like, he, he goes, yeah, oh, blasted. Uh, he turns, cratch it. Shove these animals out of the way. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, hey, let's not go me. about harassing the animals. Excuse me, Doug. He's, like, very cautiously trying to push them, like, out of the way. Like, oh, get, go, get, get going. It's okay, Gub-Gub. They can go by. 
as <laughs> pig sort of. Uh... Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> Father, I love the animals. <laughs> yes, yes, Tiny Aww. Tim. Yes. Um, but then, so as sweet. as he says that, the old man shoves uh, him over. <laughs> oh, pushing him into the animals. I'm not out of my way, Cratchit. Cratchit, get up! I'm not paying you to lay around. Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, could you help me up? No. Oh. <laughs> I'll help him <laughs> Thank you, kind sir. Oh, no problem, uh, no problem. Okay. Uh, at which point, uh, this old man goes up to AM and just starts chewing him out. Now, where's my grape? It should be thirty four ninety five. Uh, well, don't you get that tune with me? I don't you get that tune with me? I paid good money for it to be get here, and I want it now. So where is it? I would you have to do inventory before we knock or crash it? You go look for it, and make that little boy do something. At least have him look for numbers. He can read, can't he? Uh, y- yes, sir. He kind of like scoots by you all. Um, as. Cr- this old curmudgeon is is arguing with uh, Ahab. Uh, but you guys are free to do as you please. Where is Tiny Tim? Tiny Tim is on the back of his uh, dad. Oh, right here? Yes. Oh, my goodness. Grendel is going to... Should I roll a stealth <laughs> at this point? Yes. <laughs> Okay. Um, also, they are standing next to a policeman. <laughs> and he's on his dad's back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ooh, not great. A 14. As you begin kind of slinking by, you hear uh, they're all looking for numbers. The policemen are sort of like trying to keep the things at least a little peaceful. But you hear a little voice point out to you. Oi, dad, look up there. There's a furry man. Uh, <laughs> Grendel backs off real quick. Huh? A little. And, and when, go ahead, Dan. When, I was gonna say when Cratchit looks up, Grendel has slid away. He, I, I don't see nothing. No, come on, son. No, I swear it. There was a, a furry man up there. Now, come on, son. We we have to look for this number. Today, delicious cripple boy. <laughs> I'm gonna eat that little kid. <laughs> Just you <laughs> wait. <laughs> <laughs> it's the thing I do. <laughs> Listening um, to that exchange, he's actually gonna come over here and just kind of stand a bit closer to this kid. Looking up at the rooftops. <laughs> <laughs> Checking up at the rooftop. You pretty much know who who they were yeah, pointing out. Yeah, he like. Um, but uh, if you guys want to stay here and maybe investigate what's going on, or if you want to move on, um, I will say there's a couple things. Uh, you, Watson, uh, has his house, which is. Map real quick. So, Doctor Watson has his house on Baker Street, uh, which is right here. And then, I believe, where is mine? And did the <clears throat> did the police say that there was a, mur- a murder? Uh, yes, there has been a string of murders. The, the constables, rather. Yes, the, the consul. That that was the word I was looking for. I keep saying police. The constables uh, said that there has been a murder. Hold on, I'm trying to figure out where this thing is really quick. Hyper, okay, so it, actually, funnily enough, Dorian Gray you know that your manor is actually near where uh, where it was told. 
over here on Park Lane. Ah. It's near Baker Street, in fact. Wow. Well, you look at that. We're practically neighbors. Yeah. Maybe we should head home and here. I'm just gonna relax for a little bit instead of let these uh eclectic fellows find it in. <laughs> I mean, we can, but then again, I'm always down for tea. Oh, well. do little. Oh yeah. Sorry. I love tea. Well, you two would be more than welcome over at my humble apartment. Oh, why, thank you, Mr. Gray. That's quite that's quite kindly of you. Um, Doolittle, you know your house is actually outside of uh, London proper. Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I'm not trying to go home just yet. You know, I'm on an exciting adventure with you fellows, and. Mm -hmm and uh, Creature. You guys have a couple of clues uh, from your uh, fight with that robotic man. Uh, you know that uh, Dr. Frankenstein is apparently involved. Now, you don't have any information on him. You know that there, you know a lot about Dracula. Uh, <laughs> but you do know about a man named Bram Stoker um, that was also given to you all, um, yeah. as well as, as you are sort of, uh, just sort of making a, a leisurely walk, uh, you will see a stall with newspapers. Um, one of them says latest hit new book series, Bram Stoker's Dracula. Hmm. Uh, it looks like it released a couple weeks prior. <laughs> This must be a very slow news week as I pick up the paper. It's right here on the front page, some book. But say, isn't this the chap we heard about, Bram Stoker? Stoker, yes, we certainly did. And as far as I'm aware, he's actually not too far from myself and Dorian's. Well, why don't we have tea? And then we'll go and... Uh, do we pay him a visit, or should we? Do we do we know if he's like involved in the plot, like against us? Uh, you have no idea. We have no you, idea other than we just heard his name. His name. No. He is connected to Dracula in some way, and this book cemented that fact. Yeah. Well, we what we could do is we could stop by the by the corner bookstore and see if we can find ourselves a copy. Yeah, we could do that. And then we could go to his house and, and try to say that we want him to sign it. And then, Dorian, you can uh, grill him on this Dracula character who's uh, who killed your friend, your good friend, who you knew yeah. very intimately. You know, or we could just, you know, send him a letter? You oh, can. my boy, don't be afraid of confrontation. That's, that's Or we could just, you know be friendly i will say it is late so if you guys do want to head out um now i will say it i'm, in, I'm introducing an interesting thing which is that this investigation for the murders will progress forward if you guys choose to just go to dorian's and rest i was um, actually gonna go check it out either way i was gonna say there is stuff in dorian's that it vice versa right so Ooh. it's a matter Ooh. of making decisions the DM Who's is baiting been? us into splitting the party. <laughs> well, <laughs> That's Fox, a great I, idea. Mr. Fox, if we can stop by a bookstore, I will gladly go with you just to take a little bit of a peek at what, what Sergeant Lestrade had to say. And if it appears too late, we can always return back to my parlor for tea. Sounds, Sounds good to me. Sounds like come to stay together strong. Yes, you can come along, too. Perhaps we can teach you a few more words. What say we increase your vocabulary, good boy? I'm going to let do fromage. He's on it. Good job. <laughs> Actually, do I speak French? Ridiculous. Hey. 
canon is that I think Tarzan right. learned French before English. Yes. <laughs> he speaks <laughs> fluent French. <laughs> I actually don't speak French. We hard cut to a very old vendor in a bookshop. Oh, sorry. It, it's been a smash hit. We're all sold out. Heck, I bet half the city is sold out of uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula. Oh, that's quite unfortunate. Wait, are we are we splitting the party? Do you want to go? Or are we all going to the murders? Or should some of us go to Dorian's? Right now, I think it's just me and Watson going to the uh, murders. And Tarzan. Um, and Tarzan. And Tarzan. Yeah, I think Grendel will will follow along to the murders via the rooftops. Third right. ape. So if you want, put your tokens um, near where you want to be going, basically. So that way I can kind of keep track of who's where. I'm too big. Why is my token so big? I like how all the monkeys and the red fox are just speaking. Just, just so many <laughs> monkeys and a man. <laughs> where is uh, Dorian Gray going to be going? Yes. His house in the center here. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah. Oh, actually, I will send. I will send Chi with the with the party, the monkey party. Wait. Okay. Is Chi Chi a monkey? Yes. Oh God, it's we a got, big tree. We got four apes and red and Johnny Appleseed. <laughs> so, so all of you guys four are ape squad. The ape squad. <laughs> ape squad. Ape squad to monkey uh, around. Monkeying around with murders. <laughs> monkey um, business. No more monkey business. No more monkeys jumping on this bed. No. Uh, we are going to cut to... Right. As you guys uh, head past Hyde Park, you see what looks like um, a couple of officers have closed off the road. Uh, when they see you, Dr. Watson, they, they say, oh, Dr. Watson, uh, come on through. And they sort of uh, move the barricade they have up. Uh, as you see, laying on the sidewalk is a man face first in a pool of blood, the center of which there is a large puncture hole through his chest. Um, he has got mud on his boots. Uh, Inspector Lestrade is standing next to him uh, and seems just flabbergasted at what he's seen. As he goes, An another one? This is the third one this month. Uh, oh, uh, Dr. Watson. Uh, good to see the rest of you as well. I brought the brigade with me. This is a damnable thing. Kind of crosses his arm and looks down. So it. So you say the pump. So he's the guy is laying face first in the puddle of blood, right? Yeah. Okay. In the puncture wound in his chest, is it all the way through? It is all the way through him. Okay. Is it this is uh, Martin Jovial. Uh, apparently, he just got finished with a couple of men down by the pub. I was walking with Miss Oe home when uh, a local beggar found him. He not look jovial. No, not no more, I'm afraid. Now, I need all of you to roll initiative. Because we're going to do an investigation. All right. There's so many duplicates now. Hey, you. All right. Where are the duplicates? Is Chi Chi Those getting on the order? What's that monkey gonna do? Uh, I don't know. They might find something and tell Tarzan who can communicate it to the rest of the party. Can it? 
can it really do anything without like a bonus action to let it know what to do? It, it can do stuff. Well, we'll have it act autonomously. I'm fine. <laughs> Maybe it just eats stuff that it finds. I'll translate. I can speak monkey. I am a monkey. Well, all right. As Tarzan, you are the first one to sort of react. I imagine they're all talking while you're uh, sort of investigating the scene. That took me off initiative. Oh, did, did it? Shit. Uh, here, let me add you again. Where is... 19. I thought you said in session zero that you couldn't speak ape when uh, Doolittle tried to communicate to you an ape or something. You're right. I can't speak ape. I can speak monkey. Oh, it's different. Okay, <laughs> you're right. The different genius geniuses. <laughs> okay, oh, to me, it's like ape is like Latin, and then monkey is like a specification to like French or something. Yeah. What's what I find hilarious is the fact that I am actually an ape, not a monkey. But you speak monkey. <laughs> but I speak monkey. But, but Tarzan, what do you do as you stand near this uh, dead body? Um. I'm going to sniff the air for see if it leads me to any clues. All right. Uh, make a perception check. Like three. Roll a d6. Sniffing the air, you're kind of smelling around, and you get this really strong smell of sulfur, uh, like smoke and soot. Uh, but it doesn't seem like there's a fire or anything nearby. It smell. It smell bad. Can I tell where it's coming from, or? Just around. It's actually really strong where you you're standing. It smell real. It smell bad here. Like farts. Johnny, Johnny Appleseed. Yes. Uh, what are you gonna do for this investigation? You say there's a big gaping hole in that chest. There is. Uh, in addition, you are next to a park, uh, so there are trees and things, if that's important to you. I'll... Oh, let me look at my spells. Do I have a... I can't talk to the trees. Yeah. Sadly. Uh, so he's going to go up and he's going to do a medical check in that big gaping wound in his chest. All right. 18. Nice. Nice. Check, checking that wound. Um, it seems like he's been laying here for some time, so much of the bleeding has stopped. Uh, it looks like um, he has been flipped over from where he was previously, so he's he's flipped onto his uh, back, uh, and Lestrade flipped him over uh, to kind of show who he was when he was describing him. Because, fun fact, they were really bad about touching the scene uh, back in the day. <laughs> so he had flipped him over. And in examining his wound, um, Johnny Appleseed, you see that it is, I would say, about can-shaped, bottle-shaped, I guess would be the closest approximation. But the thing that is unusual is that it is also conial shape, as if it is wider in his chest, but it narrows down to his back. So the hole in his back is smaller than the hole in front of him. Uh, uh, he was stabbed or something happened back. You can see that entry room was a bigger than what it is on the other side. Also, they probably shouldn't move with the body. But hey, this is just a oh. waste of a... Oh, I, I, I'm sorry. And, and Lestrade flips it back over. Well, I mean, the damage is already done, sir. 
But you can't I'm... let a good body like this go to waste. I suggest we take this apple seed and Johnny will shove the apple seed into the body and they just plant this body in the ground and in about like 40 years he got a tree bearing <laughs> apples. Um, mm. I is this a is this an American custom or uh, good god man this is this man is dead. <laughs> this man is dead. We we need to respect his body somewhat. Uh, I thought I had something planting apple seeds into dead bodies. I believe you do. <laughs> oh, can I do it? Here, I got an idea. Instead of even digging for it, just roll 2d6. Oh, no. You're destroying the evidence. Right. Yes. <laughs> Eight. Eight. Um, as you look down in there, uh, an apple begins to grow in the chest. And he, oh my god, what did you do to this man? Um, I'm I'm hungry as Johnny obviously the, takes the apple. I was going to say, but the apple deforms. Oh no. It, it doesn't become like a normal apple. You feel like it's not really edible at the shape that it's turned into. But it has become a very defined shape. Um, as you pull it out, it has ribbles in it. Um, and you are able to assume this is like a, imagine a cone shape, uh, but with uh, bumps, uh, basically ribs up the entire length of it, uh, similar to like a goat's horn. Uh, but it is a straight cone shape. Oh, nice. It's it's an impression of the weapon. Yeah. That, this oh, is what... That must, that must have been what you were about to do all along. Yeah. Totally. <laughs> Take a great apple tree in the, in the universe. I had no idea what I was doing. I was just trying to make an apple tree. Thank you. I, I got you, man. Says the great <gasps> apple tree. Yes. Uh, <laughs> they spoke to me. Dr. Johnny Watson. Johnny Apseed starts crying to himself. <laughs> But uh, Rachel, Dr. Watts. I'm here. I'm, uh, okay. Johnny Appleseed has made an impression. Johnny Appleseed has, in fact, made an impression. Um, I want to check, like, the man's, like, coat pockets to see if he's got any, like, um, any... Actually, no. No, 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 no. Um, I want to look at his boots, his his shoes. Is there any like okay. any type of like dirt or or like thing stuck in his shoes? Uh, you can make an investigation. That's what I'm gonna do. I got seventeen. Nice. With the seventeen. You examine his boots. You notice pieces of uh, what looks like mulch in them. Mm -hmm. uh, sort of in between the the sort of gripping of his boots um, as well as some pretty wet looking mud uh, and a little bit of grass uh, with that you are able to surmise he probably ran through Hyde Park he wasn't here on the side street uh, originally uh, and it appears he was running uh, based on some of the dirt found at the lower part of his pants if you look at the the mud caked on here and his uh, on his pant legs as well as the trajectory of how it looks on his boots it appears that the man was running from that direction straight to the park and you can tell he was running based on how high the mud is up on his pant legs do you see what i mean here because i'm like actively like picking up the man's leg and like showing the straw Wow, yes. Um, additionally, you'll also see that he has some mud on his butt, so he must have fallen on his butt before he was stabbed uh, through the chest. And so he might have tripped. And it appears that he might have tripped because there is mud on his behind. But I'm wondering if there are tracks through the park there. We could easily see if they match, if the shoe prints match the running, if there's any, if there's any footprints in the mud. I have to investigate that. I, I, it's so good to have you back, Doctor Watson. 
as we cut to Grendel, who I imagine is hiding nearby. Yeah, Grendel is on a neighboring rooftop looking down at the scene mm -hmm. and watching everything that goes. You do hear what's, what's happening as well. Yes. He hears what Watson said and grumbles to himself. Hunter. Hunt the hunter, yes. And he'll jump over across the uh, across the street to the 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 next Hyde park yeah to the mm -hmm. to the next buildings and take a look around Hyde Park searching for any sort of tracks from the runner all right you can do a survival um, or a perception all right survival as you're sort of sniffing around and checking climbing from tree to tree because that's right there's trees here uh you find some pretty obvious tracks in the wetter part uh, up here by where the uh pond runs through um you do see a man's boot prints it looks like he stumbled at some point in this uh in this run before getting back on his feet and running uh, in the direction that you found but in addition you find what looks like large hoof prints. Um, would he be able to recognize these footprints? Is it in the realm of possibility, DM? You you recognize them as being equine. Okay. Uh, there is... <laughs> his his first thought is the the blue bull. <laughs> But that doesn't make any sense. No, no, the bull was on the boat. Now. Okay. Uh, so he finds the footprints. He finds the large, um, large bull prints. <laughs> he'll, he'll, he'll send Chi Chi the monkey who followed him into the woods back to, oh. um, Go, little friend. Bring the others. I will follow the tracks ahead. And Grendel will attempt to follow the tracks further in, sneaking along as he does. All right. Uh, Fox, as you're standing there, you know, watching this investigation happen, you get a tug on your coat. It's a monkey. Oh, oh. He's pointing. You should uh, let Dr. Watson know. He grabs your hand. He starts pulling you. It's not Chi Chi, is it? It is Chi Chi. Yeah, it is Chi Chi. Because <laughs> uh, Grendel told GD to go get somebody, so he went oh. and got it. <laughs> <laughs> Chi Chi will still get a turn, Brad, so you can play. Okay. It, is Chi Chi like pointing? Yes, Chi Chi's pointing where Grendel was uh, over by this sort of muddy area by the pond in Hyde Park. Okay. Um, I'll say you I'm... see a furry thing scurry away. May oh. I retain this stealth roll, DM? Yes, you can. Okay. That's it. Um. I'm going to try to communicate with the monkey. I'm going to point at Watson. I'm going to assure the monkey with, I guess, my animal handling that I'll follow the tracks, but he needs to let Dr. Watson know what he found, what, what, what happened. All right. Um, All that animal handling. That way. Okay. Let's see how my animal handling even is. Oh God, it's zero animal handling. Oh, God. 14. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Gigi's so fucking stupid. Oh, hold on. I didn't roll that public. Oh, there. Oh, All hey, right. look. G Gigi turns to Watson and Tarzan and goes, I do say this man doesn't get it, does it? Listen, there's tracks by Hyde Park. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Good. Fine. 
Gigi. I'm very proud of you. Good I don't boy. need your I don't need your pestering. <laughs> <laughs> I don't seek your approval. I don't seek your approval. Only approval of my good friend, Dr. Doolittle. <laughs> I'm, I'm oh. going to let the dog kind of lead me along the tracks. All right. <laughs> uh, what are you attempting to do? Um, Follow the tracks. Kind of follow the tracks. Yeah. All right. Uh, is that a survival check? Yes. Okay. Do I get advantage because I'm my dog? Uh, you do. Plus, you you were told the tracks were there, so yeah. you have at least some forewarning. In them. Uh... Okay. 17. 17. As you're following the tracks, um, you begin following them. You find the boot prints. You find the large hoof prints. Um... Something you do notice, though, is the boots at one point, about halfway down, we'll say where this little circle is, the boots run towards a tree before uh, what looks like a kind of muddy pit and then suddenly pivot and run this way. The tree has a large gash in it, a single gash in the side of it um, from whatever had run into it. Uh, the hoof prints obviously go towards the tree and then turn and chase after the man again. It's it's like a single line. It's not like a hand uh, yes. or something. Okay. Um. The hoof prints. Is this a bipedal or quadrupedal thing? It's a quadrupedal thing. Hmm. You also find Bigfoot prints. You also find Bigfoot prints. <laughs> That's Grendel, though. Yeah. You know that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to keep following the tracks. I assume they go towards Paddington Avenue, like backwards. Mm -hmm. Okay. As I'll you keep... head towards Paddington, um, something you are going to notice is there is a, a bunch of poof prints uh, sort of slipping through the dirt here as the person was cutting across. Um, but something that is a bit odd is the hoof prints start kind of midway in the grass. They don't appear to start as if something was running on the street and went into the grass. It looked like it just sort of appeared in appeared the grass. Appeared in the grass. Okay. I'm going to keep going towards Paddington Avenue. And are there any houses? Uh, there are plenty of houses. There's houses, uh, businesses, taverns. Okay. Uh, is it still my turn or is it somebody else's turn now? Um, as we go to Chi-Chi. Uh, well, Chi-Chi, having delivered his message and having sort of saved the day, he will follow behind, um, but he will shit into his hand and throw it uh, just on some stuff as we go by. Just people's doors. <laughs> Just tossing it. <laughs> yeah. Into people's doors and stuff. Uh, roll 2d6. That's just London. Yeah, it's just London. <laughs> you you throw it and somebody open the window and they get hit in the face with it. Goes, oh, somebody get that child. Somebody get that <laughs> child. <laughs> average <laughs> British <laughs> child. <laughs> average British child. <laughs> In points at Chi Chi. Who gave that monkey a gun? <laughs> um, as you are all investigating, I think we I think we're gonna hop over to the other group. All right. Found out some of the mystery. I'm gonna keep the same music. Uh, as we cut to the front, Dorian Manor. Ah. Oh. Yes. As you get closer, Dorian, your head begins to kind of throb. Oh, no. Oh, and if y'all want to roll initiative. Can I roll all my animals separately? No, no. You've you've lost your fucking mind. 
just for that, you don't get to roll. Yeah, now you don't even get to roll. <laughs> oh, good. Oh man, been demoted to the other party. Let's see. I'm gonna I'm gonna have my dog on the porch. Mouse in the pocket. Uh, pig in the bushes, rooting around, and birds. The birds will get on the banister. You know. Yeah. Uh, but we start with Paul Bunyan standing next to quite a, a large and opulent manor. He goes, yeah, babe, I, I'm pretty sure you need anything out here. It's a, uh, it's free. Babe hasn't, babe's already just started eating. Yeah. Like the roses. Oh, no. God. Oh, is, is that not okay? I mean, I, I, I feel free to tell him to stop. Yes. Yes, please. Those are expensive. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if he can understand you. Hey, n <laughs> nice place, though. Look at this. Wow. Wow. You notice a bunch of mail is shoved into the mailbox, and it's, like, spilling out. Um, and, oh. Dorian, something else you'll notice is that your bushes are... They have not been trimmed recently. Oh. God, I should have probably hired another butler. Oh, uh, oh. Dorian, I, I just wanted to say thank you for letting us stay here. Uh, <clears throat> let, let me get your mail. And I, <laughs> I get his mail. <laughs> you, you reach down and, and gingerly pull out all of his mail, which uh, is just tons of stuff. Bills, advertisements, um, the whole the whole kit and caboodle. Yeah, it looks looks like it's all uh, junk. You know how it is. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, it, I'll, I'll just get rid of it for you. Oh, well. well, thank you. Thank you very yeah. much. Bay goes over and, and takes the mail and eats it. Uh, uh, before he does that, I do want to make a, a real... I'll, say, I'll feed it to Babe one at a time, actually. And I'll okay. go, Bill, Bill advertisement uh bill and, and I'm, I'm just gonna feed one at a time and uh say say dorian are you you rich or something well i do quite well for myself it seems like everybody wants your money well you know what's the point of money if people don't want it that's a good point Paul Bunyan doesn't really understand that, uh, but he oh. does. He is looking a little bit at the titles to see if there's anything interesting. All right, roll. Uh, roll an investigation. All right. Ten. As you um, are flipping through, um, one of them catches your eye. It's a note, a uh, really important looking one. It has a, a a nice seal on it. And it says, final warning. Bill of sale. Uh, but the moment you like have it in your hand, and you're like, what's this? Babe just takes it out of your hand and eats it. Babe! Babe! Is it gone, gone? <laughs> yeah. Oh, babe. <laughs> babe, I think that one was important. I mean, mm. I think that one was important. Oh. Maybe and I by the way, be. do little you hear so. So what? <laughs> Babe, uh, I know you're part, you know, cow. Is there any way you can uh bring that one back? I know you uh you're you're liable to do that sometimes, you know, chew things multiple times, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. The doctor can explain it to all of us, I'm sure, but Cows uh, have seven stomachs. Very true. Yes. How do you want Babe to to spit this up? I want I want Blah. Babe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna hold my. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna. I'm actually gonna grab Babe by the uh, by the the ring on his nose, and I'm no. gonna say, no, drop it, drop oh. it. Oh. And then Earl two d six. A 10! Or you're like, no, drop, 
draw it. It, rawr, rawr, poof, it spits it out. It seems like that that note was actually tucked in its cheek. Um, so it's a little wet. It's a little tore up, but it is mostly intact. Uh, as this sort of like wad gets spit out, I, I say, uh, I, I walk over to Dorian, and I, uh, you know, motion for him to hold his hand out, and I say, oh, this one was uh, important. I was able to rescue it before Babe um, fully digested it, ah. and I just plop it down in Dorian's hand. This well, wet piece of paper. Let's see here, Dorian's gonna slowly try to open it. Touching it as little as possible. Uh, warning to one Dorian Gray. Note of seizure by a one Ebenezer Scrooge. Oh. Vacant lot has been uh, mismanaged and not taken care of for an extension over three months. Uh, payments missed. Uh, debt paid by Ebenezer Scrooge uh, with a purchase of manner final uh request to come and basically settle the debt uh when's it dated it was dated three weeks ago oh perfect i still have still have time and uh yeah i'm gonna pocket the bill in my handkerchief pocket all right and uh, enter my humble abode. Uh, the door is locked. <laughs> I, I you, believe I have a key. You rummage around in your pockets for a key. Uh, and you feel like, oh, God, I've lost it. And then you're like, no, wait, never mind. Here it is. Uh, and you <laughs> open to your foyer. And ah. see a grisly scene. One that you recognize from your dream. Well, I guess that really did happen. Huh. Paul Bunyan and Doolittle, you all see this as well. I, sorry, are you talking about the interior? Yes. I you walk in. Lots of blood. Lots of old blood. I walk I walk in and I go, Oh. You didn't leave it like this, did you? Well I don't remember. <laughs> oh. Well. Hey Doolittle, you got a What do you got what do you got back there, uh a bloodhound or something? Uh, I got a dog. I don't... Uh, what breed of dog is... Yep. It's, yes. Uh, yes. My, my, my. Yeah, I have a... I have a... Well, we don't use the term mutt. Derogatory. Ah, it's cool. Well, yeah, I mean, it's okay for you to call yourself a mutt, but... I ain't a mutt, but... You know, but, but. <laughs> he's a, I mean, he could smell though. Get him on in here. All right. It, DM, is it okay if, if we move out of turn here and, and just kind of come Yeah, you, you can move out of turn real quick. All right. I'm going to leave most of my animals on the porch. Do you want to have Doolittle have walked in as well? Dorian, yeah. was there anything you wanted to do when you walked in or were you playing it oh. cautious? I'll go Why is my to... mouse bigger than my rat? <laughs> or my dog, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Get a big duck, too. I got a big old duck. Oh, it's because the dog's doing that weird thing with the token where it's, like, okay. small. Cool, cool. Sorry. Go ahead. I'll go and uh, pour myself a drink over here. Uh, it looks like you've got a spill over here. No. Yes. Yeah. Smells like blood. There's blood. Chip says it's blood. Well, I'm glad he can see too. No, he smelled like, it. Smells like one blood, two blood, your blood. And he looks at uh, Dorian. 
He says it's your blood. It's my blood. Well, mixed with some other blood. There's multiple blood. Mm. But some of it's yours. I don't remember. Hang on. And uh, Dorian's going to open back door. All right. When you open this door, it leads into reveal. There. It leads into a large ballroom. Uh. You see uh, two dead people. One of them is Victor, your beloved butt. The other one, to your horrifying realization, is you, Dorian. Ah, shit. I hate it when I'm dead. Can't have guests over here seeing this mess. <laughs> Alright, so I'm ter terribly sorry, everyone. I'm going to have to close the ballroom. Oh? How come? Yeah. <laughs> it seems like my former butler left a little little bit of a mess in there. Does it have anything to do with his blood? Uh, no. I look over at Doolittle. Does this seem a little suspect to you? Uh, you mean the bloody crime scene? Well, we don't know if it's a crime scene yet, but... Well, I mean, unless this was, uh... Unless this was, uh... You know, some sort of... Voluntary... Blood, crime scene. Blood, <laughs> yeah, blood-spattered, uh... <laughs> living room, you know? I mean, it could just be a red wine... Oh, no, Jip says it's blood. He can smell blood. Oh. Mm hmm We I smell pat. blood. I pat Jip. Smell blood. Smell blood. Yeah. Well, I mean, it could be Dorian, something... I mean... It could be something Dorian's into. I mean, you know, I don't... But it's an awful lot of blood. Like... Wait, look, look. Dorian has opened his home to us. Dorian... I'm, I'm an American. I'm not afraid of the sight of blood. Uh, we can, um, <clears throat> we, now, we could help you, you clean it. You do know there's some entrances to side rooms uh, on the outside if you didn't want them to come this way. Um, you know what? I'll flip a coin on that. One of them is a kitchen and one of them is like a sort of large uh, waiting room. You want, you want evens or odds? Whichever you prefer. What are the odds? I'll take odds. Okay. <laughs> Never tell me the odds. Yes, right. yes, I, I... I think, um... I think we don't go in that room. I think, um... Here, let me... Let me show you to your room, though. Oh! The room's over here. And, uh, Dorian will lead... Or I'm gonna try follow. to lead you guys. Yeah, I'm gonna follow Dorian. Uh, which which oh, door okay. are you gonna go to? Um, you know, this is the kitchen, and this is like a waiting room. Or a ah, yes, room. you must be you must be hungry. Why don't we go in? I'm I'm very peckish, very peckish. Do you have any Do you have any bread? Does Dorian just open the door? Or? Yeah, yeah, he just opens the. <laughs> when you open the door, you see. The dining room. What? Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. You see, uh, Dorian, really quickly as you open the door, you impaled on a, uh, what looks like a candelabra. Well, this Somebody is really eviscerated you. Huh. Dorian's not even, he's not even concerned. <laughs> I'm going to poke my head there. in. Like concerned about his guests anymore. He's just like, the, how the fuck did this happen multiple times? How the fuck did this happen multiple times? 
<laughs> yeah, Paul in. Bunyan could actually what? see over Dorian in the ballroom, so he's just been kind of hiding the fact he knew. What happened multiple times? Holy shit, what happened? Oh my god. Oh, oh, four, four. Another him. <laughs> Dip says that this is you. Huh. I'm gonna go, uh... But that can't be you, because you're right here. Uh, Dorian, roll 2d6. All right. Three. Uh, you don't know why, but your head just hurts really bad. You feel like you were maybe going to see something, but um, it just couldn't come to you. The pain was too much. Huh. Well... While this is statistically a dangerous place for me. <laughs> uh, <can't> help it. <laughs> Paul See Bunyan. Rooms. Paul Bunyan says, uh, Doctor, any idea how long ago this happened? Um, I'm kind of I'm kind of looking at the food. Yeah. Is the food you can uh, make a you can make a medicine check. Uh do little. All right, I'll make a well, let me investigate here. A 14. Examining, uh, you can assume, based on the, the sort of dryness of the wound and whatnot, it's been probably somewhere between two to three months. Um, something that is a bit unusual is that the body does not seem to have decayed. It's just there. It's eviscerated. Um, well, I it would has not say, been decayed. I would say that it's been... Two to three months is like quite some time, but you know, normally under normal circumstances, if the body hadn't been, you know, refrigerated or something, I would expect it to be more decayed than this. Maybe we had a cold snap. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I, I don't know about no refrigeration. Oh yeah, we so... don't have refrigerators yet. We have cold rooms, I believe. We have cold rooms. rooms. It's like if somebody if somebody had uh you know bought a bought a cart of ice and put it into a room and then stored their vit victuals in there over winter or summer, I guess it would be. Oh, that makes sense. Is there a fire going right now? Uh there is. Ooh. Although that fire would make it warmer. <laughs> <laughs> Well, who started the fire? Uh, maybe it was always burning. We didn't start the fire. I mean, a fire can't burn for more than a, a day or two. I will say, as you're standing there and say that, you hear a loud bang as a door in the manor closes. The door... Wait, which door closes? A door here, somewhere. A, a oh. door down, yeah, a door down the hallway. Here oh. in the manor, somewhere deep, a door slams shut. Paul Bunyan's eyes gets really wide, and he looks at you guys, and he says, did you guys hear that? I think it was a ghost. As we cut back. <laughs> to our investigation. That one, where is it? It's this one, I believe. Oh no, it was that one. This is the train. This looks like the train. No, oh, I'm sorry. There it is. We were at the map. Uh, we are going to cycle through this. Tarzan! Uh, so I was smelling that stinky burning sulfur smell is that like local to the body or do i get the sense that it might be um, coming from just somewhere nearby all right you uh you get the sense that there might be some more of it nearby but it's concentrated near the body at the moment okay um i'm gonna walk into the park a little bit just a little bit and and give a sniff to see if I smell it coming from that direction, like from where he came All from. Right. Make a perception. 
Hell yeah. Uh, 24 hours. As you're walking through the park, you smell it, just a whiff of it on the trail as you follow further and further until you get to where Fox is standing um, over by that tree. Um, actually, a little ways from the tree uh, where that patch of grass is, where it seemed like it just appeared. That strong smell of sulfur again. Um, can I examine that patch of grass? Yeah. I'm gonna shrink. Uh, not sure what skill that would be. Make an investigation a or a survival. It depends on what you're trying to look for. I'm trying to figure out why the smell would be coming from there. So I guess it'd be more of an investigation. Mm hmm Nope. Unfortunately, you don't know. It just smells real strong here, where these tracks suddenly appear in the grass. Tarzan's just um, picking blades of grass, tasting them. Apple seed. You got this weird apple imprint. Dust. Yeah, got this out of the weapon, so, uh... Yeah? You got this, buddy? So, uh... I got nothing, honestly. Uh... You want to roll 2d6? Sure. As you're sitting there, you, you're you looking at this weird apple that you have in your hand. When it suddenly kind of like gets a face. Hey, man. Hey, man. Oh, God damn it. Yeah, what's up, Apple? <laughs> like, hey, man. <laughs> like, you got to use your noggin, man. My knock is just for apples. Well, then you better put the apple on your noggin. Johnny obviously puts the apple on his noggin. As you do, you made an intelligence check. It's perfect. <laughs> 13. As you do, you're like, okay, I put the apple on. You put it on your head. And I mean, it's just like you're, it just looks like you have a unicorn like horn on your head. A unicorn horn. That's what this apple's thing looks like. My God, we're looking for a unicorn. <laughs> You're standing in a field, I imagine. <laughs> like nobody else is around here. <laughs> when you come to this epiphany. He goes, you got it, man. Hey, by the way. Yeah. No one's going to believe I was alive. And then the oh, face dude. disappears. <laughs> go, go be with the great apple tree. <laughs> Your time a single short. tear is all that, that falls out of this apple's eye before it disappears. Wait, am I the only one left with the body? No, you're like a little ways from the body. Uh, Plus the investigators and stuff are around it. Yeah, he'll go find uh, the monkey. The Dr. Monkeys. Watson? Or which one? I have to say. <laughs> yeah, the Watson one. All right. You go over to, to Watson, which it's his turn. So, uh, Watson, you see Appleseed come up to you. Uh, oh. What happened, yeah. to that, what happened to that friend of yours? Oh, I, uh, I, I, uh, it was a unicorn. What do you mean? It was a unicorn. No, 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 no. What? I, I mean, I understand that, it, like, it could be like, like a rare thing, but what do you mean you ate the print and it was a unicorn? Well, the print was of a unicorn horn, right? 
the little spherical object that's bigger at the base then gets shorter at the top that has little wrenches. It's either a unicorn horn or it's one of those weird quaint people that live in that town that no one goes to. They like to make those objects out of wood and I really don't know what they're used for. But I'm betting it was a unicorn because that was a unicorn horn. And that's what the great app told me to do. Well, when you've eliminated all possibilities, then it's the last one remaining. Even though it might seem quite unlikely. Let's go with this unicorn theory and go from there. Where did the where did this unicorn come from? What if I know it's an apple? An apple just told me he's like, oh, it's a unicorn horn. And I'm like, all right. Now that makes sense, because like it made sense at the time when I was telling him, speaking of it, you know. And he's just rambling on and on. And then he's like, man, I could go for another apple. <laughs> what does uh, Watson I... do with this information? <laughs> I'm going to make a medicine check to, to see if he's having any signs of, um, uh, what, what's, what's the general term for crazy? Just crazy. Okay. Give her a, roll, a medicine check. Good old medicine check. Seven. Is Seven? In a disassociated state. Basically, you think that he might have cyanide poisoning from eating apple seeds. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Apples were not related to cyanide at this time. <laughs> Their seeds are technically cyanide, so. But they you did not know it at this time. We yeah. Dr. Watson was, maybe Dr. American Watson doctors was given didn't that know that. Inside, yeah. Was given that insight by how crazy Johnny Appleseed acts. Yeah. Oh, she it's now it is medical notes. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna write this down while like just quietly observing Johnny Appleseed. Yeah. He might right. have cyanide poisoning. Oh wait, I could get some apples from that body. You guys done with that body? Uh, no, it's a investigation as we cut to grendel scurrying around yes grendel is scurrying around he's still following the tracks mm -hmm. uh, as they go he's continuing to follow them uh where do they lead dm um you notice uh same way fox did that they do end in the grass suddenly um but considering that you were kind of ahead of him uh, scurrying down a bit more, you can make out, at least in the mud, right on the street, um, all the way up until you get to the intersection here, where Paddington meets uh, Paddington Station's uh, road, that there is a couple more hoof tracks, um, and they seem to appear and disappear uh, just as suddenly as it did in the grass down over this way. Hmm. Grendel wonders if this creature can fly or does it look do the the tracks look depressed like like it was jumping? Um it does look like it was jumping. Hmm. Uh, so he reaches the street. Uh, does he see any signs in the street? And looking from there, does he does he does he see any signs on the rooftops of perhaps like uh, any large amounts of um, uh, roof tiling or anything like that having fallen down or broken? Uh, roll an investigation. Okay. Ah, damn. I'm rolling great today. Grendel, <laughs> uh, you're looking around, and you're like, oh, there is it. As you're doing it, you hear a drunk across the street from you go, Holy fuck! You're hairy as shit, lad! Yes. I am afraid it is a genetic. Oh, that's cool. 
And he's just standing there, staring at you. Please, come to me. I must speak to you. Oh, don't mind me. I have just... <laughs> alcohol. Oh, I didn't <laughs> just say so. And he comes wandering over this uh, this sort of bum. <laughs> As he wanders over, Grendel looms over him. <laughs> this is nine feet. Uh, and your name is Fred? My name is Grendel. Ah, and what well, is yours? Nice to meet you, Grendel. My name is Bartholomew Bilferton. Bartholomew Benfreton. I think I name. knew a Benfreton once. Hey. Hundreds of years ago. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty old well, name. Benfreton. Do you come here often? <laughs> I do, I do. I. Uh, I. Uh, uh, Come, Fred, you want to sit down on a bench? And he, he like, pats your your back, and I'm just going to tell you this because you don't have pants. He's, like, patting you down trying to find the alcohol. Oh, it's over yes, here. Sit, sit, my friend. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, and he, he sits down on the bench. Now, let me ask you. Have you yes. seen anything odd these last couple of years? Odd, uh, I did see a big hairy man. <laughs> oh, you are such a funny person. Yeah. I guess what they tell me. Well, funny person. Am I the only oddity you've seen here tonight? Hmm. And he sort of thinks a bit. Any a odd persuasion. hallucinations? Even you can roll a persuasion or intimidation, depends on how you want to do this. I'll be honest, I thought Grendel was going to eat this guy, so I'm glad we're getting information. Uh, he'll roll persuasion, he's being nice. All right, damn it. Well, I don't know <laughs> if I uh, I my, my mouth's a bit parched. If I if I could just uh. Wet my whistle a little. I think I could maybe conjure up a memory. Bedfordin. <laughs> As this you... is happening, Fox, you see Grendel sitting on a bench with a drunk. And he is desperately trying to get him to talk. I was in there. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Um, uh, is you there... in the street? <laughs> yeah, I'm. I'm up in the street. Um, they're they're just talking right now, right? Yeah. Okay, so he's definitely going to be tracking that. Um, how far away is he from me? Uh, these icons are all screwed up. Not super far. He's okay. basically a block away. But they're not big blocks. Okay, I said, uh, yeah, I can see them. I can do it yeah. if I have to. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm actually gonna cross. What time of night is it? Uh, it is getting close to midnight. Close to midnight. Are there any lights on in any of the houses? There's a couple. Um, Are... you know, here and there. Okay. Um. Most of the businesses have closed. Yeah, businesses, I'd assume, are closed. Um, is there one that overlooks this area here that has a light on? Uh, there is. Okay, I'm going to approach that door, and I'm going to knock on it. You boom, boom, boom. Coming! Coming! Uh, and you hear somebody sort of move about... Uh, and uh, the door opens, revealing a, an elderly man. Uh, he's wearing a, a vest, and he's dressed pretty sharp. As he goes, oh, uh, sorry, uh, uh, is 
Are you in need of anything? Uh, yeah, I'm. Business uh, is closed at the moment. I, I'm actually working with um, Scotland Yard on something. I have a question oh. about the park across the street there. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I certainly would like to help. Uh, what what happened? Well, first of all, I'm I'm really sorry to knock on your door this late at night, but I need to know: Did you hear or see anything strange happening tonight across the uh, across the way there? Um, I didn't hear a scream uh, and running, uh, uh, just a sound of, of commotion. But I was in the back, and he points uh, to a storeroom uh, in the back. I, I was. Uh, getting some medicines ready for tomorrow so I, I wasn't near a window to see what it was oh, okay you weren't able to get to the window in time well I ran to the window shortly after I heard it I, I saw a strange light coming from the park uh, that's probably the extent of it Can you describe that light to me uh, oh uh, it's like a, a torch a red reddish orange uh, rather large. Orange. I assumed it must have been a, a carriage of some kind. So you saw a reddish orange light coming from the park? Yeah. Did you that... hear anything else, Odd? And please don't uh It's been a weird night, so don't 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 hesitate to tell me anything that you think uh you might not say under normal circumstances. Roll a... roll 2d6. 2d6? I'd punch him in the face. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I, uh, if you ask me, I, um... There's been a couple of murders around here. I assume that this is connected to all that. Murders? Yes, uh... People found stabbed? Uh, through the chest? They've all been stopped through the chest. Yes. I I have a theory. What's he, that theory? He he goes over to his counter right by his uh his window and his writing desk and he grabs something off of it and he brings it back. And he holds up a book. This book is uh, yellow with uh red writing and it says Bram Stoker's Dracula. I think they were vampires. Probably killed well, by by some vampire hunter, like in this book. Oh, you think the um, the people who died were vampires? Yes. I mean, who goes wandering around this late at night? <laughs> Are there like a group of drunks just like stumbling behind yeah. us right now? There is. There's like bums going around and other drunkards. Well, that's an interesting theory. Um, well, I mean, have you have you seen any or heard of any um, body strained to blood lately in this area? Uh, no, but uh, it, it, in this book, uh, they, they describe scenes of blood, so I assume they can't get all of it. And what if they're fool? They could just enjoy killing their evil thing. That is, that is true. Well, thank you for your time, Sarah. And just to reiterate, you, you saw an orange light from that direction, right? Did you, did you like, that was a strange question, but did you happen to smell anything? Like any weird smells or other sounds other than shouting? Um, now that you mention it, it, it did smell a bit of uh, soot, but uh, I mean, I assumed it was because of the fire. Okay. Well, thank you for your time. Oh, cool. Uh, good, good night. And close the door. Uh, as we cut to Chi Chi. Uh, let's see. I think Chi Chi will probably. Chi Chi will stick with Tarzan, I think, for now. And just sort of be following behind. All right. Uh, Awaiting orders. Does Chi Chi have anything that they 
uh, would want to do or like while they're following or no? Well, what was what is Tarzan's lead? He's because he was at the top of the order as a while ago. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm investigating where the grass, what where the footprints started in the grass, and currently I'm chewing on said grass to to try to gain some insight. Oh, but we haven't gotten to the end of these footprints yet. Well, I, this is where they originate they, they from, as far as I can tell. So I'll okay. hand I'll hand Chi Chi a couple blades of grass. All right, Chi Chi will also chew the grass. As as you all chew the grass, uh, to this strange mystery, I'm gonna play one final thing for tonight. All right, all right. Dear diary, ah. Uh, the eternal curse of victory. One might think that after centuries of waging battle against mankind's greatest minds and hunters, the thrill and triumph would still hold a glimmer of excitement. Yet, here I am, victorious over my many foes. And what do I feel? Boredom. Yes, that is the word. The great and terrible Dracula is bored. I must admit, my most grandest of duel with my most famous of foe, Van Helsing, ended not in a roar of thunder or a clack of doom, but in a whimper. I never did find his body. I suspect it could have been the work of Hansel and Gretel. I wouldn't put it past them to hide such a simple librarian. The man did love his dusty books. Hmm. Books. You know, that reminds me. There is a man in London. What was his name? Broom? Brahm? Ah, yes. Brahm Stoker. And that is where we will end tonight's session. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And stay tuned for more brutal crime scenes in England from the Adventurer's Landing.